Turn seas into highways. 
<laughs> you know, I hear all of the talking and the things like that. That is such a healthy sound. It's healthy. It's just you, you hear people conversing and, you know, that's, that's, you need time together. You need time together. Relationship is spelled T-I-M-E, time. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So good, so good, so good. God is so good. <laughs> God is so good. He is. God is so good. <laughs> He's so good to me. Mm -hmm. God is so good. This is. This is not prepared, is it? God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. You know, we're going to, I'm going to just do a little bit of worship songs. and But uh, as we get prepared for that this morning, I want us to open our hearts with uh Thanksgiving through our giving. Um, now, some of you may not know Miss Lydia. I've had a crush on her for a hundred years. She has been my heart throb. She has prayed me through more stuff than you can shake a stick at. And it's so wonderful. She hasn't been here in a little while, and so my whole world lit up when she came in. I love you. I really do. But this morning, what we want to do is with our giving. This is, again, if I could just put it like this, you know, we talk about tithing and offering. This is not a debt. It's not a debt. It's not. It's worship. It's worship. It's an acknowledgement. It's a declaration. And what you're basically saying to the Lord is, Lord, I know that what I got came from you. That's really what you're saying. You know, Lord... <laughs> There's no deception here. I know the fact that I'm blessed is because of what you did for me. You brought me into, into the life. You brought me into, into the things that you have. Allison, come up here real quickly. I want you to say something concerning this. <laughs> come on, you, you spur of the moment. Just spur of the moment. I want to say something about tithing, giving. You know, it's important. It's important that we that we have this as part of our family. And so if, if we don't teach our kids to give, we don't teach. This is the reason we do all of the kids coming up here is because we want them to have an understanding that giving is a part of their life. Yeah, you want to say something about that? I just want to, I guess I just, you know, at our house, we, you, so much of tithing and so much of generosity and so much of our giving um, theology often centers around the tithe and the money that we give on a Sunday morning. But it's a culture that you start in your homes from a very early age with your children of giving regardless of what they receive, giving regardless of what they see grow, giving regardless of what they get back. It's a, it's a conversation and an example and a culture that we say we give because we're joyful to give. And that overflows to every area of our life. We don't give as a strategy. We don't give as an as a obligation. We don't give as a chore. We just look for opportunities to give out of every faucet of who we are and what we do whether it's our time, whether it's our talent, whether it's our resource. And we make a point to do that here as, a, as, as we give unto the Lord, it's an archetype of that, it's an overflow of that. And I think that as we, you know, it's easy to just send our kids through the lines and not have the conversation with them 
just about, you know, there's the conversation of this is where, our, this is what we're giving to. This is where our dollars go. And your, and your dollars go far beyond this room and far beyond this city and far beyond this country. They go, they go far, far away to people who are doing the work of the gospel. But you can just have and establish that conversation with them in such a way to say it is our honor and our privilege to give of what we have to the kingdom of God and to the people around us. And then God blesses that, he sees that, and it creates a, a culture and a dynamic that giving then is just a reflex, it's easy. It's just a, it's just a reaction and a thing that you don't have to think to do, it just flows out of you. Because I think we live in a world where people are takers and not very good givers. And I, I want us to always teach our children, this is, we give because we're thankful. We give because we trust the Lord. We give because we know that God's our source. And so this morning, I just, I just want you to have that attitude of giving and uh, always, you know, I, let me just say this before we do this, always set aside a portion, just a little bit that you can give to the poor. Always keep that in mind. That's important to the Lord. It's important to the Lord. That's the heart of God. And I'm not saying give everything you have, but if you will just set aside a portion to give to the poor, always make that a part of your life. Make that a part of your legacy and your heritage. Okay, let's pray. You want to pray over this? Go ahead. Lord, we thank you today for this wonderful privilege we have to sow into the kingdom. Today, we set our hearts in agreement, and we declare in the name of the Lord Jesus that your, your heart is pleased, Lord, with our heart. And we just pray that we be in alignment with you. I just pray that you'd bless this tithing, this offering. And we just do this in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Does everybody understand concerning the electronic giving? Everybody understands that? You can give on your phone. You can give back here in the back. You can go. They have sedation set up for you. And then we have these wonderful young people that's come up, and they're just going to bless the Lord with us. So if you would stand with us for just a moment, and let's just come and let's just honor the Lord with the first fruit of our giving this morning. Let's do that one more time. Father, I want to say thank you for every heart. Thank you for the faith. I proclaim a pastoral blessing over every person, every business, every adventure, every dream, every imagination. Let it explode in their life and flourish to its fullest potential, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Let's all stand for just another moment, would you? And we're just going to, what we want to do is just kind of bring the lights down a little bit, just have you an opportunity just to, just to kind of shut things out and just, just love on the Lord for a moment. And let's just worship with, with, with this group here today. Say a 
Come on, lift up your hands to the Lord. And I saw thee. Hallelujah. I saw thee. I saw thee. I saw thee. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. on high and I declare your goodness and your mercy it's your goodness it's your goodness in Jesus name and Jesus name I, I want to I want to pray for somebody this morning uh, James and Debbie Valentine Debbie has been I don't know if it's bronchitis I don't know what she's been going through but it's been three weeks 
that she's been dragging that thing around. And she's too important to what's going on to have to be sidelined for all of that. So let's pray for Debbie. Is there anyone else that just, you just been dealing with this ongoing, lingering sickness or whatever? Right here? Who else? Uh, yes, Michael, back here in the back. Just give me a minute, I'm going to obey God, okay? There's people in your heart right now. And like I told y'all a couple weeks ago when I was here, that I walked to church and God was here to heal. Some of y'all need to get out of those butts off your seats and get up here right now and get your healing right now. God is here. So come on, let's go, let's go. God's not done. God's not done yet. I know some of y'all need some healing. I know some of y'all need something. I know some of y'all need something for y'all's marriage. I know y'all need something in y'all's life. I know y'all need something for y'all's children. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. This is a Holy Ghost church. Start speaking in tongues. I know God is still here. Debbie needs prayer. The way I need prayer. Our family needs prayer. My mom's back is out. God is here. God is real. God is still alive. He is not dead. It is time to step forward. Man, it is time for y'all to be a man and step up and be the man of your household. Let's go. Let's go. I know that there's more in here. Let's begin to pray right now for healing, for change. Here's what we're like. Those of you that need prayer, I want you to come up here. And I'm going to ask a couple of people to come and stand with them. I need, we need agreement. I need you to get out of your seat, come and stand with some of these people that are up here. Come on. Some of you guys, you, you know how to pray. Come on. Thank you, Lord. I want you to come. We want you in agreement. We want you in agreement. Thank you, Lord. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. Come on. From you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. for the Lamb of God and see you are worthy of it all oh you are worthy of it all for from you are all things and to you
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And everybody say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Day and night. 
want to do something here. Um, you are worthy of it all. Hold on, let me. I want to. I want to speak a word here this morning. Over, uh, Nelda, would you go over here to Tanya Christensen? Tanya, I feel like the Lord is going to break something that has been lingering. You know, I almost want to say it's something that's been generational, and I don't even know what I'm, where I'm going with that. I feel like there's been something that's been a long time that has been um, connected, oppressive. I, I don't even know in that area, but I feel like the Lord is going to do something over something that's been there for a while. It's, it's, it's been there for a while, and, and it's, time, it's time to break that cord so to speak, because it, it, it keeps you, even unconsciously, can keep you tied to something you don't even know or understand or what was. And the Lord has got a new day for you. The scripture comes to me for you that says, behold, I do a new thing. Don't consider the old thing, neither the things of old, for I will do a new thing. Shall you not know it? So the Lord is going to cause there to be a breakthrough. It's going to be kind of a, a breaker anointing that the Lord is going to, to give you. And you're going to break out of an old pattern shell thing that has harnessed you in. And you're going to break through into a newness of life. And uh, you're going to break through into a, 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 a freshness, a brightness. There's going to be brightness. That's the word that comes to me. There's going to be a brightness that's going to come to you. And you're going to break into the sun's going to shine on you. The sun is going to shine on you. And you're going to begin to rejoice. And I feel like you're going to come into a season you've been happier than you've ever been in your life. I feel like you're just going to experience just, I just feel good. I just feel happy. And people don't appreciate that until you've been in situations where, you know, you just, because sometimes darkness just almost becomes, well, that's just the way life is. And we don't realize that there's, there's, the sun is going to shine. And it's going to be good. So now, would you just lay hands on her? I just want you to pray for her. Father, I just, I join my faith with Nelda right now as we pray for Tanya. Father, we take authority over the things that was. We take authority over the things that have tried to harness, hold her in, keep her from becoming, doing what she was supposed to do or become. I pray, Lord, that your word would be like a hammer and that it would break through, Lord, into the, into the areas that she has been called to. I pray, Lord, that there would be a great season of brightness and joy and strength. Lord, let the sun shine on her today, I pray. I declare the favor over her and the generational things that have tried to attach it. I break the hold of that. And I pray, oh Lord, that she will move now into freedom and into liberty like she's never done before. I take authority over the spirit of heaviness that would try to, that would try to dominate her. I break the influence of that. And I say, Tanya, you be free in the name of the Lord Jesus. Be free in your mind, your will, your emotions. Be free in your life and your spirit being lifted up. I declare in the name of the Lord. And it's going to affect you physically. It's going to, the, the loosening of that literally is going to be like a new body God's going to give you. You're going to, you're going to begin to run and not be weary. You're going to walk and you're not going to faint. The Lord's going to strengthen you. And whatever infirmities or things that will try to come, you're simply going to overcome them. So I declare freedom over you in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I say a new day, of, a new beginning, a new, a, a new hour for you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, I declare it in the name of the Lord. Amen, 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 amen. Can somebody say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Good things are ahead for you, Tanya. I believe that with all my heart. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, Father, I want to say thank you for your blessings today. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you have established, Lord, in this place, uh, your determination to 
to do what needs to be done in every heart and every life. I pray, oh God, that you would just give us ears to hear, heart to understand. Lord, let us be spiritually keen to what the Holy Spirit's doing and saying, I pray. Lord, I ask it in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Everybody say amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul, all that is within me. I do want to encourage everybody that as we have things going, hook up with it. We've got a lot of sign-up sheets out there for you guys to uh, be a part of things. You've got to make the choice to be a part of things. How's that baby doing? How old? How old now? Two weeks. Can you just stand up and just hold that baby? I just, you know, we just need to pray for lots of new babies here. Lots of hair. That's amazing. Congratulations, hon. I'm so proud of you. I love that. I remember we went through a drought of having babies, and we just prayed. And we had a lot of new babies born over the next year. Maybe we need to pray that again. I'm just telling you, I feel... I asked Lucy and Bill if they were ready to get started with a new family. They've had a whole week to prepare for this and just be thinking about it. <laughs> All right, I want to give you. I want to give you a scripture. Um, real quickly, you brought your sisters. One from Georgia. She came to side in with this Oki. <laughs> but one from Maynard and a beautiful daughter. So glad you guys are here. Welcome, welcome. You guys have a wonderful sister. That is the truth. She's a, she is a jewel to this place. I want to give you a scripture right quickly uh, from Romans chapter, chapter 5 and verse 18. This is King James Version. And I'd like for you guys to just kind of absorb this thing with me for a moment. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but, but be filled with the Spirit. Don't, don't, be not drunk with wine. Now, of course, he's speaking to the first century church. And, you know, a lot of times in our culture, we, we, we hear that and we, we don't really uh, grasp it in the same context. Uh, in that first century, wine was such a uh, such a major thing. The Roman citizens and soldiers they averaged drinking about a hundred gallons a year of wine. It was it was well it was it was culturally it was just that's what they had. And uh, I'm not sure what the water purifications was actually in those days. Uh, let me just tell you something. There's parts of the world that we go to now that you don't drink the water. I don't know what you're going to drink, but don't drink the water. They used to call it the Haitian blues is what they called it. And you, you, drink, you drink water from some of the other countries, and it can get to be really rough on you physically. But wine was just a, a very big part of the culture. And uh, it wasn't Welsh's grape juice that they had. It was actually the fruit of the vine that they drank. And uh, it was, it was, a, it was a, a part of the culture as part of, their, uh, of, of just who life was overall, especially in that first century. And Paul was just talking to people concerning that. He said, you know, don't, don't, don't be drunk with wine. He says, you're obviously going to drink wine, but don't, don't be drunk with wine. We're in a success. Don't, don't overdo it. Don't go looking for things that fill you or alter you 
to the point that you're not functioning as you should, but rather what I want you to focus on is being filled with the Spirit in the same way, in the same manner that a person would fill themselves with wine, that it would affect them. I want you to not go that direction, but rather go the direction of being filled with the Spirit and let it fill you, let it empower you, let it alter your lifestyle. So don't be drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Now, let me just say, he's not talking about, he, he's talking to Spirit-filled believers here. When, when we talk about this being be filled with the Spirit, we almost get the idea of, well, we, the experience of what we call Holy Spirit baptism. Uh, that's not what he's talking about here. Uh, these were already believers. Um, the Ephesian church uh, was a very powerful, powerful church. Powerful believers filled with the Holy Ghost. So he wasn't talking to them about that spirit-filled experience that we might understand it to be today. Um, because they already received all of that. When you got saved, I don't know if I have time to really kill religious tradition, but what the heck, I got a couple of minutes. We have had the idea in our mind about what we call receiving the Holy Ghost. The groups that I was raised in taught us basically that we gave our heart to God and, and then we would go tarry until the Holy Ghost would come and by invitation and by our tarrying and our hanging out and waiting and pleading, then the Holy Ghost would come into us. But I, I, wanna, I, wanna, just, <laughs> I wanna just say something to you. When you got saved, you didn't get part of God. You didn't get his arm, and that's all you got. You got all of him. You got all of him. You got all of him. You got the whole package. You got the whole package in such a way that it transformed you till you were identified as a new creation. One translation said a new species of being that never before existed. You became the, what the Bible calls the temple of the Holy Ghost. The temple, the dwelling. You remember the, the, how the temple they, they carried they, the, in the tabernacle in the wilderness with that ark that they had, the, 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 they couldn't just, nobody could go in there. Only the high priest because it was such a holy thing. Normal people, they couldn't go in there. You couldn't touch it. Uh, if, if you, it, it, that was the aboding place of God meeting with man. God wanted to meet with man so bad. He wanted to be in communion that he provided a temporal dwelling. That was the temporary temple, if you will, of the Holy Ghost. But when Jesus came, the veil in the temple was torn that separated man from God and the Holy Spirit that dwelt there where God met with them, that was no more. And on the day of Pentecost, that was when the new birth happened and God came in them. The Bible said that the, the, the room was shaken. The power of the Holy Spirit blew in there and it wasn't just some little flick your big candle that came in there. The cloven tongues of fire was something that was so powerful because it was the glory of God that blew into that place, touched them, transformed them, made them new creations at that moment. That was God's mind. And they became the temple 
of the Holy Ghost. That was what God wanted. That box that they carried around, that was just a temporary holding until the real temple was prepared. And when Jesus died, paid the price for you and I, the Bible said in 2 Corinthians 5.21, he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So Jesus paid the price. He became what I was and I became became what he was. Suddenly now, I become the temple of the Holy Ghost. And Acts 2, that began to happen when he came in. There. And the glory of God, listen, the glory of God was always manifest with light, with fire. That's how it always, when in the wilderness, whenever Moses was there in the wilderness with the, the bush that burned, but it wasn't consumed, it wasn't fire like we know it that would consume something. It was the glory of God that rested on it that appeared in the form of fire. E Ezekiel chapter 1 talks about God. It it, it told, it gave a, a, an illustration, a picture of him. He was on a platform upon his throne and all of those that were underneath the platform were there worshiping, but it described him and it said he was clothed from his loins up to his loins down with fire. Now, it wasn't fire like we know. It was the glory that sprang out of him. And if you look from the throne, the rainbows that exploded out from there, what was that? That was the glory of God. And every time somebody would get close to him, they would glow. Moses was up in the, wild, up in the, up in the mountain with God. He came down. His face was glowing. Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration, his garments were glowing like, like nothing had ever been able to make them glow before. They'd never seen anything like that. It was the fire of God. See, when you see that, you see the manifestation of God's presence. It's with light. It's with fire. It's, it, that, that's, what it, that's what it is. And that's what fell in that room. It was the glory of God that fell in that room. And the transformation took place to where those people became the temple of the Holy Ghost. Up to that time, they were still in the Old Testament. Jesus' entire ministry was, was not New Testament. The New Testament didn't start in the book of Matthew. Everything that Jesus did, he operated under the Old Covenant, under the Old Testament. The book of Acts was the place that the New Testament began. That was the place the new birth began, the new covenant. We have a new covenant based on better promises. And now we became, dear God, the temple of the Holy Ghost. So whenever you receive Christ into your life, you don't just receive part of him and asking the rest of them come later. Listen, when you got saved, you received him. Now, we've misunderstood this because we're thinking about, well, what about the thing of the speaking in tongues, that type of thing? Well, can I just tell you something? The Holy Ghost is already in you as a believer. I'm sorry that we didn't understand that growing up, but from a theological standpoint, it don't even make sense the way they were doing it. They were, they were well, I received Jesus in my heart. Yes, I'm a new creature, and I'm praying that the Holy Ghost will come. Let me tell you something. Nothing happens without the Holy Ghost in this earth. Nothing happens without the Holy Ghost. So how is it that that experience is manifest? And can I just tell you something? Speaking in tongues is not the only manifestation of the Holy Ghost. A lot of people have spoken in tongues, and they didn't done anything since then. That's the last time they moved in anything. The Holy Ghost is on the inside of you because God's on the inside of you. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. He's already there. Listen, you can believe me now or when you get to heaven, Jesus will say, of course he was right. I am telling you, the Holy Ghost is already in you. You could be born three seconds. God filled you. You're a new creation in Christ. The Holy Ghost is already there. So how do you explain then that experience that we would know as speaking with tongues? And it could be many other experiences. I've had experiences that I don't even have a theology for. But what happens is it comes in the sense of bubbling up. You remember the scripture Jesus talked about? He said, out of your belly will flow rivers of living. That's, that's plural, not just one, plural. 
all that you need is already in you. But there are some people, they'll live their life without ever having an overflow experience. That's why, do you remember there's a scripture in the Bible, in the book of Acts, when there was a group that the apostles went to, and they said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Now, what they were talking about there, have you had this experience of overflow in your life? Has, has that which is within you, has it sprang up since you believed? They're believers. Now, what makes you, what makes you saved isn't that you speak with tongues. What makes you saved is that you believe with your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved. These people were saved, but they had never had that experience. So it, when they, they said, well, we've not even heard that there was such an experience. We didn't even know that there was anything of the moving of the Holy Ghost like that. And so what the Bible said, they laid hands on them and they had that experience. Now, when they laid hands on them, it didn't come out of the light bulbs. It didn't come from Saturn. It didn't come from space. It came from within. It was already in them. This is the importance of laying on of hands. Because what it happens when hands are laid on you and faith is applied, it unlocks things that's in you that you don't even know is there. There's experiences from the Holy Spirit that you don't even know exist. But God, that, that's the importance of being in a service like this. You come up here and someone lays hands on you, what happens? It stirs up something on the inside of you that springs out. Now, a lot of times we haven't known how to do that, and we try to intellectually re wrestle with that, and so people have had problems with uh, speaking in tongues. Listen, don't get all tied up in that. The Holy Spirit is in you. That's the big thing. Does he want to manifest in tongues? Yeah, but you know what? He also wants to manifest in healing and in miracles. Well, there's a lot of people who don't believe in any of that. I don't know even why they go to church. They don't believe in anything. The, the manifestation of the Holy Ghost in your life isn't just entertainment for you. It's to empower you. Jesus said, you shall receive power. That word power is, a, the, the Greek word is dynamos. Dynamos power, dynamite power. You know, without the overflow of that in your life, what ends up happening is you can move in the authority, but he's saying to you, no, no, there's more than just the authority of it. There's the power of it. It's the difference between a policeman standing here going, stop. Well, you know you need to stop because behind him is the city and behind him is the state. Behind him, is, and pretty soon you got Navy SEALs running to your house. But you take that same policeman and put him in a tank, and suddenly we're dealing with something on a whole different level. And Jesus said, there's things that's on the inside of you that when it springs up, you will receive power. You will receive, there will be things and experiences that you've never had before. The, the Holy Ghost, listen to me, the Holy Ghost. Somebody said, well, I've been saved a long time, but I don't have the Holy Ghost. I'm sorry, I, I've only read this Bible a jillion times. It's not there. And we have doctrines that we've accepted for our lives because grandma told us that. But we have new light in the things of the Spirit that, that if, if you begin to look at the Bible like for the first time, it's amazing what will be revealed to you. God's not hiding from you. He's not trying to make it difficult. Oh, I'm seeking the Holy Ghost. You know, there's only one place that the Bible talks about tearing, and that was at Jerusalem. Anybody want to get a flight today? No, me neither. <laughs> Fact is, they tarried. Why? Because he hadn't come yet. That was the only reason they got there. And incidentally, he appeared to over 500 people, and only 120 showed up. Boy, that sometimes gives me a little bit of encouragement. <laughs> I'm sure he thought, why aren't people coming to church? Anyway, Jesus appeared to them, and he said to them, go tarry in Jerusalem. And so they went there. Why were they there? They were waiting. They were in one accord, one mind, one accord. In the process, while they were waiting, the Spirit of God fell in that place. And they had this experience. 
And they did begin to speak with tongues. Now, it's not the tongues that you and I would speak with. The reason why they were speaking in tongues is it was a supernatural sign. They were speaking in the languages of the Medes, of the Parthians. They were speaking in all of those that were all over the world. That's why so many people got saved. They were all gathered for that Feast of Pentecost, and they all got saved because those disciples were there speaking in all of their languages, telling them about the gospel of Jesus Christ. So it was a super, the tongues that they spake in, it wasn't the tongues from 1 Corinthians 14 where it said, I speak in an unknown tongue. No man understands me, howbeit in the spirit I'm speaking mysteries or divine secrets hidden in God. In that case, they were speaking the languages of the people that were there for that big feast. But you and I, we have a overflow experience of tongues that's very important. And, and you, you have to realize it's in you already. You, it's, it's in you. Just, you. you just receive that. You yield to it. You ask for it. It's a gift. You know, the gift. The gift. See, here's a gift. Royal, I want to give you a gift in, in just a few minutes. Really, this is a gift that's going to change your life, and I want you to have this. But I don't know that you're really seeking enough for it. You know, here, here's the gift. And that's a free gift. Free is free. I want you to have that in just a few minutes. I, I want to, I want to, we treat God like that. Is it a gift or is it an earned acquisition? Is this something that we're getting from God because we were good? It's a gift. It's a gift. So the gift is freely given by the Holy. Boy, I did not mean to get into this. I'm still talking about don't be drunk with wine, where is the excess, but be filled with the Spirit. But you have to understand this that I'm talking to you right now is a powerful aspect of your life. You need to understand that, I guess the whole point is the fact that all that you need, whether it be tongues, whether it be gifts of healing, working of miracles, all the manifestations of the Spirit is inside you already. It doesn't come from around. It comes from within. Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. Now, they didn't understand that. What that meant was the government of God, the plan of God, it operated not from without, but from within. When you get born again, you, you become that temple of the Holy Ghost, and all that God has is on the inside of you, and it comes out as you learn to yield to it. In your spiritual life, you're learning to yield to the Holy Spirit. I see what we have worship here. These guys are up here singing their guts out. That guy's playing that sexy saxophone over there. I love it. And people are going. <laughs> I'll bet you make a great lover. In spirit. <laughs> All right, forget I just said that. <laughs> when it comes to spiritual things, you woo it. You yield to it. You long for it. You hunger after it. I'm Hunger is the currency of the spirit. When, I, when I'm hungering, I'm, I'm, I'm thirsting. I, I, just, I just need, I don't even know what I need, but I just, I need, I need this. See, that's a hunger. That's the thing that unlocks the rivers on the inside of you. And Jesus said, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. What's the source of that river? Well, the Bible talked about the very throne of God and rivers poured out of it. Where do that rivers flow to? They flow through you into the world. Something comes out of you. And so, listen to me. Tongues is very important. Yield to it. Don't fight it. Yield to it. It comes from within. 
I, and listen, I know from a theological standpoint, there's a lot of denominational barriers here. But I promise you, God, <laughs> God is bigger than you think he is. He, he, the Bible said, I want to do exceedingly, abundantly above all you can ask or even think. And so there's more in you when you walk up to somebody. When the Bible talks about the fruit of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, what, what, what happens? I move in something. There's been times when I would go to the hospital to pray for somebody, and I would walk onto the property, and I would feel an anointing just drop on me. Maybe it wasn't dropping on me. Maybe it was springing out of me. But I would feel the anointing. Was the, that's the work of the Holy Spirit of a gift inside me to give to somebody else. And listen, the gift isn't for you. The gift is for you to be a conduit to someone else. Whether it be healing, working of miracles, whether it be you know, lay hands on You see people that lay hands on them, and what it'll do is unlock things that's on the inside of them. There's deeper experiences for you than you've, than you've ever known. And the laying on of hands does that. It does that. I know we've gone through the COVID scene. Blow all that stuff off. Listen to me. Laying on of hands is important. Are you sick? Call for the elders of the church. They'll anoint them with oil. They will lay hands on them. Prayer of faith will save the sick. The Lord will raise them. Something is on the inside of you that you don't even know is there. You know, you know, does that make any sense to you? And please forgive me. I, that is not what I'm talking about here. I'm, I, but but it's, it, it parlays over into that that you have to understand that's the experience that you have had as a believer. Can I just say this to you? You have the Holy Ghost inside you now. You've received Christ in your life. He's there. Maybe you've not sought him and hungered after him and worshiped him, loved him. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe he's not been precious to you. But when I get close to him, something springs out of me that is the working of the Holy Spirit in my life. Now, he's going to manifest in a lot of different ways. And if you don't speak with tongues, well, it's there for you. And the Bible says this real quickly. The Bible says this, 1 Corinthians 14. He said, when I speak with tongues, of, he said, and there are the tongues of men and the tongues of angels. But he said, when I speak with tongues, he said, no man understands me. I'm talking to God on a level that he knows. Angie worked for a nursery one time when we first got married, a little daycare. One time she came in, she said, don't talk to me about Mickey Mouse. I don't want to hear about Six Flags. I don't want to hear about Disney World. I don't want to hear about any of that stuff. What she was saying is, I want to talk to somebody on a level, an adult. I want to talk to an adult. Most of the time, all God ever hears from us is, he hit me. She hit me. They took my parking place. They, didn't, they hurt my feelings. That's all he hears. It's a kindergarten class. That's all we have. But when you begin to speak with tongues, the Bible says you're speaking divine secrets or mysteries that are hidden in God. Now, Paul made this statement. He said in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, I believe it was. Yeah, look it up yourself. He said this. He said, I speak with tongues more than you all. And he said, don't forbid to speak with tongues. Now, Paul made that statement. The Bible says this, when you speak with tongues, you're speaking divine secrets or mysteries that are hidden in God. Isn't it interesting that Paul wrote three-fourths of the New Testament? The revelation of Jesus Christ, grace through faith, came by the Apostle Paul. Where did he get that? Because when he prayed in tongues, he spoke mysteries and it was revealed through him by revelation of what he was speaking, of what he was saying. 
And when you begin to speak with tongues, you're speaking divine secrets, the Bible says. Hey, listen, you say, well, I don't believe that. Well, tear that page out then. I mean, how, how, many, how many pages do we need to tear out because some, is it in the Bible? If, if it's in the Bible, dear God in heaven, if it's in the Bible, let's at least embrace it as truth. And so Paul, he said, for the abundance of revelation that was given to me, there was a messenger of Satan sent to buffet me. Give me a thorn in the flesh. Well, where did that come from? Well, the Bible said, Mark chapter 4, it said, these are they that are sown among thorns. See, Paul got a revelation and the thorns were given. Some, and, and let me just say, it was not a messenger from God. It was a messenger of Satan. For what reason? To get the word out of him. So he said, these are they that are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the, 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 the cares of this life, the pressures, the anxiety of other things enter in and choke that word until it becomes unfruitful. There was the thorn, that's why he said it was a thorn in the flesh. A thorn doesn't kill you, it just irritates you. See, a lot of you have thorns that are messengers of Satan because you've got an irritant just below the skin. And you don't understand that the attack is against you is from the devil. Okay, that's another whole message. I don't mean to go there. But I'm telling you, the revelation that he got was because he said, I speak with tongues more than you all. Does that, is it possible that we should do that every day? Is, if, if that is true, is that something that we should apply to our prayer life every day? Because Paul said, I'll pray with my understanding, and I'll pray in the Spirit. I want to do both. I'll sing with my understanding, and I'll sing with the Spirit. Okay, obviously, I blew past that. Be filled with the Spirit. Real quickly, let me give this to you. This is not talking about receiving the experience that I just spent the last 20 minutes talking to you about. That's already done, okay? You've got all of God, your new creation. This is referring to the lifestyle that you feed on. What you feed on dominates your life, saved or not. That's the truth. Okay, let me give you another scripture. Romans chapter 6 and verse 16. You guys all know this scripture. He said, know you not that you to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Okay? So you've got this situation where you're either yielding to something from the Lord or you're yielding to something from the devil. There's only two kingdoms in this world, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. And whatever you yield yourself to, if I yield myself to one, it's at the elimination of the other, the weakness of the other. Amen. So you know, it's almost like Brother McCorkle used to give the illustration. He said, I've dealt with two dogs that are constantly fighting. And they said, well, which one wins? And he said, the one I feed the most. That's the one that gains dominance in my life. And what Paul's talking about here, he's encouraging people to say, look, you don't need to feed the flesh. Don't be drunk with wine wherein is excess, but rather in the same manner, feed yourself on the spirit until it affects you like that. So you feed one at the expense of the other. And the point here is, is the fact that this is your choice. You make the decision to hold the offense. You make the decision to go to church. You make the decision to read your Bible. You make the decision. Every day, you are making the decision as to whether I'm going to be drunk with wine or whether I'm going to be filled with the Spirit. And so what this says is, you have a choice. And another thing it says, you can be filled with anything. Can a man have a devil? He can have anything he wants. That's a hard word right there, isn't it? You can have anything you want. You can be born again, total child of God, but you can yield yourself to the devil and give him place in your life. And that's why the Bible said, give no place to the devil. Why would he say that if that wasn't a reality? 
what you feed yourself with, what you look at, what you yield to, the decisions you make determines this scripture. I'm, I'm either going to walk in this way or I'm going to be filled with the Spirit. That's important. You can fill yourself. You can, you can fill yourself, your, your attention, your mind, your heart with other things, the distractions. We're so full. Somebody says, oh, I wish God would come and fill me. You're already full. You know, one of the... <laughs> One of the big things I think we need to do in church is the old-fashioned deliverance is empty people out. <laughs> well, it's just something for you to chew on there for a moment. Sometimes we need to be emptied. You know, that's why forgiveness, confession, repentance, what does that do? That's emptying me out. I, I'm, I'm taking, I'm eliminating myself here. I'm, 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 I'm taking the things that have weighed me down and beat down on me. And I'm making the choice. And let me just say something. God's given you the choice. And you can go through this life and you can say, God, why did this happen? The Lord's going to look at you and say, why did you let that happen? We have too many distractions, guys. We have too many distractions. So the scripture says, don't fill yourself with the other things that take you out of balance or take you out of control. But rather, be being filled every day with the Spirit. Every day I'm having to make that decision. I could not have just gotten saved and thought, okay, job done. I don't even need to think about it. No, you got saved. You're born again. You're a child of God. But you've got to make the choices now as to what you're going to be filled with. Am I going to am I am I going to give my attention to the world, or am I going to give my attention to the Word? That's the decision I'm having to make every day. Where's my Bible? I don't remember. Uh, maybe I left it at church last week. No, see, this is something you need to have. You need to have, and what a wonderful opportunity. Your phone's got 42 different translations in it. You can find God if you want Him, if you're hungry enough, if you're thirsty enough. Your time, your focus, though, is taken up with television, with social media, with hobbies, with pride, with self, with stubbornness, with events. All of those things we become drunk with. We have become drunk with. And we stagger through life never knowing what it is to truly be free and be happy like God intended. So he was saying to you, the thing that you need to do there is be filled because <laughs> your spirit filled, but you appear to have a part in determining the extent to which or how much the Holy Spirit flows in and through your life. What fills you most? What has your attention? Where is your passion? Now, this wouldn't be so bad if we didn't have an outlaw that was loose called the God of this world. He's still in operation in this earth. Look around. You can see it. We have an enemy, an adversary, who goes about seeking whom he may devour. He comes with affliction, persecution, cares of this life, deceitfulness of riches, lust of other things, all entering in. The attack comes against you because he wants to keep the word out of you. So the problem is, is you can't just indulge with things without there being a spiritual attack to try to settle you, concrete you into the lifestyle that never allows a spirit-filled life to take place. I'm mad all the time. I'm angry at this one. I'm yelling at that one. Wait a minute. Something is wrong. Something's out of balance. Something is out of order. I'll tell you what it is. We're feeding the flesh and we're starving the spirit. We're, we're drunk with wine. We're in his excess and we're wandering around like a drunk man. And he's saying, don't do that. But rather, each day you need to make the decision to be filled with the spirit. That word filled, it's a statement. It's more of a sense of an overflow. I'm satisfied. I'm complete. In the same sense, the 
out of your belly is going to flow rivers of living water. I just, I just walk around and I just feel the spiritual flow in my life. That's what God wants on a daily basis. But you're not going to get it because you were saved or you got baptized. Well, I was baptized way back when. You can be baptized until every tadpole from here to New York knows you by your first name. That's not doing it. You have to have a daily feeding of the word of God in your life and be filled. So let me, in closing, let me read you the rest of that scripture. This is Ephesians 5, verse 18, and I'm going to go 18 through 21, okay? And here's what it says. Don't be drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Now, how do I do that? What should my day look like? How do I conduct myself? Verse 19 said, speaking to yourself in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, spiritual songs. Not crying to your beer music. (laughs) There's some songs. So I loved the Eagles. Man, I did. Isn't it crazy I can still sing half the Eagles songs after all of these years? Hell has froze over. They've come back and they've done all the things they said they wouldn't do and and here all of these years. But I look back at a lot of the lyrics that was tied to a lot of the music that I sang and I'm thinking, dear God, I mean, that's number one is depressing. What was it? And I'm just going to sing that declare it, singing it and making a confession over my life. My life's going to hell in a handbasket. <laughs> Desperado. <laughs> she knows them too. <laughs> but what do you fill yourself with? I mean, seriously, what, what do you sing? What, what, what do you sing? Or is, is songs as uplifting? And they, music has changed. You know, I remember way back in the day when B.J. Thomas was singing a number one song, Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head. <laughs> Wasn't that just wicked? Listen to the music today. It's no one, well... It's no wonder we're dealing with so much emotional roller coaster. People singing and saying and making professions to things that actually, your words become vehicles that carry something from your heart into your life. And what you say initiates. In all the time that God was creative, not one thing happened until he said And when he said, it started in motion. Proverbs said, death and life is in the power of the tongue. But yet we will say and sing things that are just wretched and horrible. Talking about loneliness and fear and that's just my address. And this one's leaving me and that one's, I mean, it's just horrible, horrible things. So he said, here, look, if you want to live in the spirit, he said, speak to yourself in psalms. Hymns, spiritual songs, singing and making a melody in your heart to the Lord. That's important. Giving thanks. Did you know that giving thanks is part of the thing that keeps you filled with the Spirit? It fills me up. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then finally he says, and submitting yourselves to one another in the fear of God. See, these are things that fill you up. These are the things that spiritually impact you and affect you. So we have, guys, a responsibility to make the decision, which dog am I going to feed here? Which dog am I going to actually get allow to get strong in my life? Which kingdom am I going to be giving to? Because I have to do that every day. Every day, you've got to feed one or the other. Because if you feed the, the world, the, the, if you feed the, the uh, carnal side, the spiritual side will become weak and frail and unable to function. What you feed gets strong. So he said, don't be drunk with wine, where is excess, 
but every day be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing, making melody to the Lord in your heart. Fellowship with one another, love one another. That's building me up. Getting close to you does something in me that I can't do by myself. That's the way God intended. You know why? Because we are many members of one body. And I need you. And I hate to break this to you, but you need me. Sorry about that. You know, you can pick your friends, but you're stuck with your family. You're stuck. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I'm not really. I'm happy about it. So God has something for you today. Listen, let's get out today and let's go out there and let's make this life, let's make this week more spiritual than last week. Amen. This week, I'm going to feed something spiritually. I'm driving down my truck, in my truck, if I had a truck. <laughs> should I get a truck? I live in Texas. I should have a truck. I need something that's got some dirt on it. I'm just telling you. <laughs> what am I going to do? I'm going to sing and make melody in my heart to the Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. With all my heart, I love you. <laughs> and in just a moment, it's like a presence of God. <laughs> It just settles down in that vehicle, man, and tell you the glory of God. Just, just <laughs> If you just turn your attention to him, just turn your attention to him. <laughs> he's, boy, he's right there because he enjoys that more than you do. I mean that. <laughs> God is so good. Here's what I'm going to pray. I want to pray that God would put a hunger in our hearts. Put a hunger in my heart for you. I'm not trying to be super religious and weird. I just need a hunger for God. I need a hunger for God. Maybe you haven't been hungering. I'm just going to pray right now that you hunger. I want you to bow your head with me for just a moment. And, and let me just say something to you. If you haven't given your heart to the Lord, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's the most wonderful experience that a person could ever have. All you got to do is just say, come into my heart. You remember when we were little kids, we said, come into my heart, into my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to stay, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. <laughs> we used to sing that with the children, and I still it's still so clear in my mind. Would you just right now just say, Lord, fill me, fill me. Maybe you've been in a backslid condition, and what that means is you've just been spiritually cold. Just say, come into my heart. Just fix me. I don't know how to fix this. I don't know how to fix this. I don't, I don't know how. But would you, Jesus, help me? His name means Savior. He'll be there. Jesus, fix me, help me, and put a hunger in my heart for you. You are the meal. The Bible's the menu, but you are the meal. Lord, I want to. I want to. I want to fellowship with you. I want to commune with you. I, I don't want religion. I, I don't want. Any, I, but I want you, Lord. Come into my heart. I pray. Come into my heart and put a hunger in me. And I want to be filled. Daily, I want to be being filled daily in the morning when I wake up. I want to, I want to look for ways that I can fill. <laughs> you know, you, you might think, why, why is that necessary? Because you're a vessel and you leak. <laughs> you leak. <laughs> but God.
God wants to fill you every day. And you know what he wants to do? Every day he wants to kiss you right on the mouth. Every day he wants to do that. Every day. So, Lord, I just pray for this congregation. I pray for this congregation today, and I'm praying, God, that you would strengthen them. Don't let us live our life, Lord, in some dark place, but I pray, Father, that you would take us by the hand and lead us into your fellowship of your light and your goodness and of your kindness. God, I love you more than anything in this world, and I want you above all things. And I pray, Father, that that be the heart cry of our fellowship and our church, I pray in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. Everybody say amen.